Okay, this is going to be a tutorial for the KR800 menu setup to communicate with EMR programs. So I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to, this is going to be hand holding the camera the entire time. Well, I mean, I do this on a tripod, but there's just too many movements to do right now. So I'm just going to do the best I can using the, my hands holding the camera. So it's going to be a little bumpy every once in a while. So when you turn on the first thing you got to do is set up a menu on the KR800. So what you're going to do is you're going to come over to the main screen when you turn on the KR800. As you can see this is the uh, KR800 here, main screen. In the upper right hand corner here there's a little wrench. You're going to click that wrench and that's going to give you the main menu. And what we're going to do is in order to, for this unit to come out of the output port which is an RS-232 9-pin serial port. This is not using the traditional round 8-pin port that you've seen on previous Topcon machines. This is using the new 9-pin serial port RS-232 output. That's the one that we're going to be doing. It will also do the same thing on a LAN output also. But right now we're just going to put this like if you're going into Office Mate we're just going to use this on the RS-232 output, 9-pin. So we're back to the main menu here. We've clicked that wrench, and we're going to go down here to the word that says COM, and you're going to hit COM. Now you can see you have choices. Output data format, communication format, use of output port, and baud rate. So on output data format, you want all, which is what this is set for. Communication format, this is the default, old. Forget that. Change it. Click old. Click standard one. That's what most all EMR programs, EHR programs need, standard one. Go to use of output port. That turns the output port on the side that I just showed you on or off. It has to be on. Click on. Baud rate, 2400 baud. That's what we'd like you to keep it at. However, you do have a choice of 9600 baud. We like to keep it at 2400 baud. That's what most of the EMR programs need. So let's go with the 2400 baud, not 9600, 2400. Then down here in the lower left hand corner, you'll see the word return. Click return. Okay, now you're ready to get the rest of the items that you need to do the output. Okay, so the next thing you need is if your computer has a true blue serial port on it, a true 9 pin port, then all you need is a null modem cable. And I'll show you what that is. If it does not need a null modem kit, if it does not have a 9 pin serial port on it, then you'll need a USB to RS-232 9 pin adapter. And I'll show you what that is. So for that we're going to swing down here. So as you can see, this is a null modem. It says right on it, null modem adapter, null modem cable. This one is male on one side, nine pins, and on the other side, still says null modem, female, nine pins. This is what you need to connect your KR800 to the computer that has the EMR program on it. It must be null modem must be female on one side and male on the other side. Now if you don't have an RS-232 9-pin port on your computer then you'll need a USB to RS-232 adapter. They look like this where you have that 9-pin male connector on one end as you can see and on the other end you have the USB, standard USB plug. And this requires a driver which comes with these adapters when you buy them. It comes on a CD and you put the, the uh, driver in, put the CD in, you plug this in, it finds the driver and configures it. I'm not going to show you how to configure that port though on the computer in this tutorial. You have to make sure that it's COM 1, 2, 3, or 4 and you do that by using Windows and the Device Manager. I'm not going to show you that here. I'm just going to show you how to connect this up 
So basically then, we're not going to use the uh, USB to RS-232 adapter because um, my computer has a 9-pin serial port on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the female end of this null modem cable and we are going to plug it in. Excuse me, we're going to take the male end. I'm sorry, the male end. And we're going to plug it in to the female RS-232 located right here. I'm going to plug that right in there. And then I'm going to take and plug the adapter into the computer. And I have a uh, old tower style computer here that happens to have the pin adapter on it. And I'm going to plug that right into the adapter, the 9 pin adapter that's right there. That's what they look like. And that has to be a female end on your cable because there are male pins in there. This has to be a female end on the adapter. So we're going to plug that right into here. Okay, I'm going to plug that right in. Okay, and you can actually screw it in, make sure it's tight if you want. All right. Once those both those connections are plugged in to the autorefractor and the computer, then you need to take a reading on the autorefractor to test it. And I'll show you how to do that. We're just going to go over. I have a schematic eye in here. We're just going to go over and we're going to test those readings. It's taking the readings right there. Okay, it's taking three readings. As you can see, it's taking three readings. And now what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to check the signal coming out of the autorefractor into the computer using a small program called Hyperterminal. You download it and you install it. Once it's installed, you then run Hyperterminal on your computer. And I'll show you how to do that on the computer screen. And right there we have a shortcut to Hyperterminal. So we're going to run Hyperterminal. I should get the tripod for this. Um, and you have to give it a name just to start. Just put T for test. Click OK. And then what you want to do is you want to come down on Hyperterminal here and you want to select the COM port that the computer is connected to. Well, if it has a 9 point serial port on it, a 9 pin serial port already on it, then all you need is the only thing that's going to come up is COM1 because that's what it is. There won't be any other COM ports. Click COM1, click OK. Make sure this is set for 2400 baud here. Okay, 2400 baud. 8, 9, 1 in hardware. That's the default. The 2400 baud should come up automatically. If it doesn't, click 2400. If not, you might have to go back to the device manager I was talking about earlier and set the port. But I'm not going to show you how to do that. That's a little complicated. Click OK. Now when you click OK, you'll see down here in the lower left hand corner, it'll say connected. It'll say auto detect and it'll start clicking off the seconds that it's connected. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go back to your KR and you're going to hit the print icon. And when you hit the print icon, it's going to send the data out. I'm going to do it twice to show you what it does. This is what the screen will look like. See how it says RS-232 data out, data success? And then it'll print it out on the printer if you have it turned on. And all that data went over to Hyperterminal. So now that you see how that works, print it again, RS2 data 32 out, data success. And it prints it out. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what that looks like on Hyperterminal. Okay, so we're over here with Hyperterminal. And I'm just going to redo this for you. So basically then, you're going to click on the hyperterminal, you're going to give it a name, test, you're going to click OK, COM1 is what will come up by default because it's the only COM port on the computer. If it has a 9 pin serial port, click that, make sure this is 2400 891 in hardware, click OK. You can see now we're connected down here. Now I'm going to hold the camera, now what camera right here and watch when I hit the print icon. can't reach it. Watch the data fly into Hyperterminal. It'll fly in there as a, as a serial connection. Here it goes. See how fast that was? That's how fast the data comes out. I'm going to do it again just to show you. 
See the data fly in and fly out? I'll do it one more time. Here comes the data. Hit the print icon, there goes the data flying in. That means that all the data is getting into the computer. Once that's done, any EMR program will take that data, providing it has the equipment integration package for that particular instrument, is built into the EMR, it'll take that data and put it into the fields for you for your patient record. Hyperterminal, again, is just a checking program we use to check to make sure the data is coming out of the unit, out of the KR, autorefractors, doesn't, doesn't can be any manufacturer, into the computer. We just check to look to see if that data is coming out. That's what Hyperterminal does. You do not use Hyperterminal for your EMR program, your EHR program. You do not. You only use it to check to make sure that the data is coming into the computer. Once it's in the computer, then the EMR company should be able to hook a, uh, configure the system, or maybe some of the reps too that are selling the units can, can configure the system to accept the data for OfficeMate, CompuLink, NextGen, Crystal, any of those. So um, that's the tutorial on how to do it, and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Thank you.